Hey everybody, how we doing today? So, DIY project. Uh, the perfect kayak here has a problem. It's a very wet ride. Uh, when I'm going through and busting through chop, I just get doused from basically top to bottom, front to back, all my gear just gets doused. And the main cause of that is when I run into a swell or chop, the water basically kicks up a stream, hits this crossbar, and that just causes the, the, the splash to come up. And that's what really gets me. So what I want to do is to create a kind of a, uh, a splash guard that'll just basically cover the front corner right here, and that'll prevent all of that, hopefully. So I'm going to try to build just a quick, easy, cheap little splash guard. So that's the plan. Now you can just go on eBay and uh, pick up a pair of these splash guards for around $65, all nicely made, but that's a bit much. So I figured I'd just go down to my local Ace Hardware, picked up a tarp, basically a 10 foot by 12 foot uh, poly canopy tarp. This is some 10 mil stuff. And uh, that and a little bit of rope and that should do it. I'm really only gonna use it for like when I do an, an offshore trip or if I'm gonna go specifically out on a kind of a rough day when the water temps are cold. So it's really not very often. So just something quick and easy I could tie up and untie and roll away and just put it away when I'm not using it. Well, that made it easy. It's got those nice grommets already with the reinforcement for the top corner. And then I'm gonna have the saw line just goes right down the center basically. And then there's another tie off point just where I kind of want it. So that's going to be perfect. So I'll just need to cut out that about two foot on the bar and then a straight track right back to the front. And yeah, pretty much it. Nice. All right, we've got it all mocked up there. Um, I've got it all hard tied in with just rope. Uh, I won't work on the mounts until I take it out for a test drive, but that's basically the setup and where I'm going to attach things. And I've got a rope that extends it out and kind of spreads it out from that side there. And then now I'm just going to uh, duct tape the uh, extra fabric there so it stays double reinforced by the creases there. And that'll tighten that up a bit. This side's already fine there. And that should be it. We'll take it out for a test drive and then, uh, then I'll work on doing some quick release mounts for it. All right, I finished uh, trimming it all up, double folded it over, uh, used rubber cement and then uh, the super heavy duty duct tape to seal it up. So it's all double reinforced on those other sides. This side was already done. So there we go. That is our splash guard. So I'm gonna just do a quick rig up on it and then uh, tomorrow we'll take it out for a test drive and then after that, uh, finalize it. Hey everybody, how we doing today? So another beautiful day here in the Florida Keys late afternoon but I want to take advantage of it by doing a little testing today I want to get the old uh, splash guard out and give it a test drive uh, before I do the permanent mounts for it I also got the old motor out I put a new uh, float needle on there and a pivoting screw on there and that seems to be fixing a lot of problems it's had for a long time so super happy about that but uh, I'm right here at the 11th Street and Riviera launch right here in Key West and I just didn't have a lot of time, so I could just go run out. The winds are coming from the south, southeast, so they're blowing up the Atlantic side, so that'll be a perfect spot to test this out and uh, yeah, see how it works. And there's Fred's sad boat getting covered with mold from non-use. <laughs> Fred's been just catching a lot of bad weather is the only problem. <laughs>
man, this thing is awesome. Ah, I've been stupid all these years just getting soaked. Oh, it just kills like 95% of the oversplash that I get. Today was a perfect test because it's that perfect 45 degree angle that I'm heading into. So it just kind of splashes up here, hits that crossbar and basically goes over my head and just splashes me the whole time. I would have been totally drenched from top to bottom. All my rods would have been all just doused. And this, nothing. I mean, I get a little splash from hitting the bar on the outside in my uh, paddle and then it sprays a little bit, but getting nothing from the front here. That is just so good. I do understand why they use mesh screens for these on the more custom ones. But I think because I'm on power, that wouldn't work out. I think it, the spray would get uh, forced through there and blast it up. So I kind of have to go with the solid. And I kind of like that. It catches the wind, but it actually just opens it up more. So that's even better. So yeah, loving it. <laughs> I was almost thinking about not bringing the rod because I just wanted to do testing, but glad I did. I might, because the wind's coming out of this direction, I might tuck into the channel over there along the mangroves. But this has a nice little current that's running through here. You never know what's around. Oh, there's fish in there. Looks like bait, probably. Yeah, there's glass minnows, probably pilchards in there as well. That means there's probably other fishies. Well, what you've got is you got kind of the waves and wind getting pushed through here and it's kind of dumped into this natural channel here. So anywhere I see current, I know I'm gonna be fishy. And then it's got this kind of edge here and then I saw that bait pushed in here cause they're all getting blown into this corner. So where the fish are, are right over there in that edge, just waiting for stuff to get pushed in this side over here. Oh. Bites. Now I just got to figure out the presentation to use. All right, there we go. <laughs> I knew there'd be fish around. What we got? A little snapper. Bam! You've been caught by the paddle tail. Now this is the Boca Chica Channel outlet here. You can see the bridge there. I don't know, I just never ever fished this spot. Um, it's an, an outlet, so that's always great for attracting fish, especially a great tarpon spot. But like I said, it's just a hassle getting over here for me because I don't have any real close launch spots. Basically that area where I launch from down in the residentials is about it. And that adds a mile of slow puttering along then another couple miles to get over here. But uh, yeah, definitely a spot I need to kind of get my stuff zoned in on put some time into it but maybe this tarpon season but because the wind is pushing out of this way i want to tuck in along those mangroves over there and along that edge and just do some spot fishing but loving my splash guard oh yeah that's why it gets a lot of boat traffic it's like a main thoroughfare for a boat so that's why i don't fish it a lot now i remember Uh, I just came out here looking. It's kind of dirty out here. That's too, too rough, oh. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> you here, in the middle of nowhere, yeah. in the, on the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I rarely ever come in this way. I'm testing out this splash guard today is why, so yeah. I wanted it kind of rough, so it worked out perfectly. I really like your videos. I almost watched every video. The, so only, I, th the only thing I did not get is your oh, the shirt yet? Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's, it's, too, it's okay. It's, it's too. Uh, uh, it's not easy to to uh, send it to Germany. Yeah. Right? yeah. So.
<laughs> no, I'll say from him, he's from Germany. Oh, really? Hey, watch my videos, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Guys, right. uh, chasing. Yeah, we're just out looking for filters. We got a few hundred. Oh, good. Mostly good. off the point right over there. Yeah, you can't even see in this water oh, over here. Oh, wow, it's real mucky. Rock, yeah. yeah. Saw birds diving out there, but man, they're hard to find. Yeah, and we saw some tarpon flipping around in here while we were looking. Rolling around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll work this edge here real quick. Current's moving pretty good. Both of the boats out there are saying they're seeing tarpon rolling out here. Most likely they're the juveniles and local tarpon that are here year round. Live at all the marinas around here. But a lot of fishy areas, just a lot of boat traffic is the only problem I have with it. Well, I found the pilchards at last, at least. There they are good spot. Pilchards, pilchards, pilchards. Those are the nice size ones. That's kind of why those uh, tarpon all are, are over here. Maybe need to move up to a bigger paddle tail. Now that we got our test drive out of the way, I think the mods that I'm going to do is just do a quick release snap so that I could attach to right there. And then uh, maybe put in a screw or something that I could just clip on there and then just make the front the adjustable part. And uh, then we'll be golden. So was this whole video about a splash guard that probably only a handful of the people in the world would ever want or need? No. Okay, the reason for today's video is what I like to talk about is the hassle factor. All right? And I think it contributes to more to people not catching fish than all the issues with gear and bait and location and tide and so forth. Uh, for example, like when I do those offshore runs and I'm running out to pass the reef and whatnot, on a flat calm day, it's no problem. I zoom out there, zoom back, it's all nothing to worry about. But on those more windy days, choppy days, okay, what it's like is basically someone taking a cup of salt water and throwing it in your face. But not just once, but every time I hit a wave. And I calculated out, it's basically every three to five seconds I'll hit slop and it kicks up a cup of water into my face. So imagine that for an hour, every three to five seconds, splash, splash. <laughs> And that's what it's like going out there. And after this last trip, coming back in the dark, getting just hammered, I'm like, oh, I got to fix this. One hour of just, I got to fix this. I got to fix this. All right, enhance the splash guard. Now that hassle factor, um, basically why I think of it is you have the good of fishing, the love of fishing up here. And then you have, with any good, you have the bad, the negative, or the hassle factor. And as more of that hassle factor kind of increases, that benefit, the love, starts going down, down, down until it breaks even. And then you get to that one tipping point where it goes the opposite direction, where you might have some time to go fishing, but then you start thinking, Ugh, but then I got to do this and this and this. Eh, I'll just stay home and I'll watch Steve on YouTube. And you don't go fishing, which means you don't go catching. All right. So, uh, for example, for the kayakers, the biggest one I see is loading and loading that kayak. I mean, you're at home, you gotta load that kayak onto your vehicle, get to your spot, you gotta unload it, you go fishing, you come back, you gotta load it back on your vehicle, you drive home, then you gotta unload it, okay? Uh, same thing with gear guys, okay? You take a lot of gear, you gotta collect all that gear, you gotta load it in your car, get out there, unload it, use it, load it, get back home, unload it, wash it all up, dry it all out, put it all away. It's a huge amount of work and that hassle factor grows pretty quickly there. So when you only have a, a little bit of time and you're like, eh, not worry about it. Uh, a good example was today. I mean, it was 3.30 when I left, but I knew that I could go right here in Key West to a launch spot. Uh, takes me about seven or eight minutes, okay? Take me five minutes to unload and get everything prepped and park the car. 
And so I've got maybe 15 minutes and I'm on the water and then 15 minutes come back. And so I've got a half an hour of that three and a half hours is my hassle time, but that leaves me three hours of quality fishing time. And for me, that's worth it. I'm like, Poof. I don't have to think about it and I'm out there. All right. So that's kind of what this video is about is that you really have to like take a step back is really the biggest reason why I'm not catching a lot is that I'm not fishing enough and maybe spend less time worrying about the gear, the lures, the bait, the wind, the this and the that, and put some quality time on fixing those hassles and eliminating those hassles so you have a better ratio, which means that you'll spend more time on the water and catch more fish. So anyways, that's what the video was about. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.